I may be down, but I'm not out. Tom Brady's never out. You broke the rules. You want Philly food? Yeah, let's do it. Which led to the notorious wardrobe malfunction. It is caught by Dyson. Oh. Can he get in? Most controversial Super Bowl moments. And here we go. Super Bowl 38, the halftime show, Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson. Look, Janet was rocking it. Then JT pops up, all hell breaks loose. Janet Jackson then did the full court press media tour. What people don't understand is he was to take and rip the piece off that he did. The leather but, piece. Right, but more came off than what was supposed yeah. to. The fallout, CBS was fined $550,000, the largest fine levied against a television broadcaster. The number of complaints was more than 500,000. Super Bowl IV, Chiefs, Vikings. Len Dawson was a Hall of Fame quarterback, yet he might have the biggest controversy of them all. Dawson was linked to a known gambler who'd been arrested carrying $400,000 in Dawson's phone number. That this guy in Detroit, a gambler, had contacted about half a dozen NFL quarterbacks during the season. One of the six was Dawson. Dawson's father had died a couple of weeks earlier, and this guy called in sympathy, you know, and he, I guess he hoped to get the feeling of how the quarterback felt about the game. And anyway, so the whole horde of reporters jumped on that. Well, this guy must be throwing games, they must have thought. And poor Dawson was <coughs> trapped by a media horde. Reports surfaced Dawson was not alone. The gambler phoned many other NFL players, including Joe Namath. Head coach Hank Stram was forced to hide Dawson in an unlisted room until kickoff time. Dawson was subpoenaed, but absolved. The Chiefs won 23-7. Super Bowl 37, Raiders, Bucks. Former Oakland coach John Gruden, then with Tampa Bay, takes on his former club. Raiders head coach Bill Callahan does the unthinkable. The game plan was changed on the eve of the game? Uh, Friday, Friday For morning. Yeah. Friday morning, Bill Callahan comes in and says what to you guys? We're going to go back to the offense we had all year. Did that ever happen? Anywhere? College? No, pros? No. Where the game plan that you'd had all week long, all no. season long, two days before, it's like we're going to do something different? No. Do you think it had something to do with like we're going to try and outsmart Gruden? He thinks we know what we're going to do, but we're going well, to... No, well, no, because we went back to the offense that Gruden knew. So oh, the audible was that with that. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, Tim. Black 15 Lightning tap said, they're coming right here! Mm. Also... All pro center Barrett Robbins went missing one day before the Super Bowl. Turns out, Robbins had left his San Diego hotel the night before without his cell phone or his wallet, took a cab 20 miles across the Mexican border to Tijuana, and partied all night and most of the next day on the eve of the biggest game of his life. I was out of my mind, out of control. My life was unmanageable. I was completely living in a fantasy world. Uh, in my mind, we had already won the Super Bowl. Robbins was off his depression medication, nowhere to be found. When finally arriving back, he was incoherent, medically unfit to play. He was dismissed from the team, and on the day of the game, he was in the hospital. The Raiders got creamed, 48-21. Super Bowl 33, Falcons. Broncos in Miami. Atlanta lost three games that season, and safety Eugene Robinson was coming off a Pro Bowl year, also being named Bart Star Man of the Year for his philanthropy in the community. The day prior to the game, Robinson was lounging around the hotel swimming pool with his wife and son. 18 hours before kickoff, Robinson cruised the streets looking for sex with $40 to spend. He made an offer to one woman, an undercover police officer. One Falcon noted, guys had been going there all week. It's just that Eugene was the one who got caught. The Broncos throttled the Falcons the next day, 34-19. Super Bowl 23, Bengals 49ers in Miami. There's a major story breaking out of the Bengal camp, and it isn't good from Cincinnati's perspective. With that, here's Gail Gardner. All right, thank you, Bob. An unfortunate set of circumstances for the Bengals. The league announcing today that fullback Stanley Wilson cannot play in the Super Bowl. He is suspended for violating the league's substance abuse policy. The night prior to the Super Bowl, this happened. A team meeting was scheduled, but running back Stanley Wilson didn't show up. A bathroom door was jimmy to find him. He was sitting on a bathtub embarrassed that he had used crack cocaine. A lot of the players took their playbooks and slammed them on the ground. Their heads went down and they just uh, 
they got kicked in the gut. After missing the 1985 and 87 seasons for violating the league's substance abuse policies, he was banned from playing another down. With the field in Miami choppy and muddy, members of the Bengals truly believe Wilson would have made a huge impact in a game they lost 20 to 16 in the final minute. Are there more controversies to be had? Will the lights go out at the Super Bowl? We'll wait and see. If you'd like to hear more thought-provoking content like TYT Sports on Facebook and to help in my journey to keep media independent, Go to tyt.com slash Rick.